All right, so let's get started with today's tutorial. First thing you want to do is prep your tumbler. The tumbler I'm using today is a 20 ounce camping mug from the uh, Craft Haven. So I've already sanded her down and now I'm going to be adding a nice even coat of this red glossy spray paint. Once that's evenly laid down all over the entire tumbler, we're gonna bring it back inside, let it dry for about an hour. And then we're gonna go in with the resin application to apply our glitter. These camping mugs can be a little bit difficult to spray paint and glitter. So you wanna make sure that you're paying close attention to the handle to ensure that you get the entire handle prepped and spray painted. So you're gonna see that I am playing close attention, making sure that I get on the inside of the handle as well as underneath and below the handle. So now we're gonna apply the glitter to the tumbler. And of course I'm using the resin method for this step like I usually do. However, I'm actually going in with the new facet by DIY Epoxy, which if you didn't see my first impression video, then you may wanna go and check it out. But if you've seen it, then you already know that I am definitely loving it. I'm still currently using it and will be giving you guys a full on review on what I think of the epoxy and some of the pros and cons. But once that's all spread over, I'm gonna use St. Nick to sprinkle that all over the entire tumbler. This is a beautiful color from our Sugar and Spice Glitter Collection. You can find all of our glitter and other products on www.sugarandspiceglitter.com. You can go ahead and check her out. I've been using this red color for everything. I am absolutely in love with just how she looks, her size, how she lays down, everything. I just love her so much. I also wanted to mention that in the description down below, you can find a link to the fast set that I'm using today, which is by DIY Epoxy, along with a 10% discount code if you choose to purchase their resin. So once you've gotten that glitter sprinkled all over the entire tumbler, you got really good coverage, you want to go ahead and let that cure. Once that's cured, we're going to go in with our first layer of epoxy all over the entire tumbler, and we're going to epoxy until smooth. For this tumbler, I actually needed two coats of resin to get a completely cute smooth surface before applying my vinyl design now for every step of the way i'm going in with the diy epoxy facet which is one really cool aspect of this epoxy is that you can use it for all layers including your final layer so that is one of the pros that i really love about this resin so far so like i said you're going to want to spread that all around the entire tumbler and you want to try and get as much coverage as you can with your resin we're going to put on two really good coats of resin for this tumbler and then once that is cured we're going to move on to the next step which is applying our vinyl decal you also want to make sure that you're paying really close attention to the handle for this style of cup it can be a little bit difficult to get full coverage on the handle especially with the resin so you may need to apply more layers of resin just to get good coverage on that handle again keep in mind that you do not want to sand your tumbler down if you have too many rough spots or if the glitter isn't covered all the way because if you sand down too too much you can take away the color and the shine and the sparkle of the actual glitter itself so before sanding or doing anything else you do want to make sure that you have a pretty good amount of resin cured on your surface before going in with sanding after we've gone in with two really good coats of resin i do go in with a little bit of sanding around the rim and a little light sanding on the body just so that we can apply the vinyl design to a super smooth surface so i'm going to fast forward here so you can see what the next step is which is sanding and cleaning off the tumbler and then we'll hop in like i said to apply the vinyl
So if you noticed in this clip, you can probably tell that I've already sanded the tumbler down a little bit. I forgot to record while I was sanding down the base of the tumbler. However, I just went in with a really quick sanding. Now I'm just going to show you guys how I very lightly sand around the rim of the tumbler. You want to be careful at this part not to go down too, too low or sand down um, too much of the actual resin or glitter. So around the rims, I'm just taking very careful um, care of how much I sand down. I'm feeling along the way to make sure that it's nice and smooth and that's pretty much it so now we're ready to move on to the next step as you can see we have a really smooth surface we're ready to apply our vinyl design i washed it off with soap and water and also sprayed down the epoxy with alcohol just to make sure that we, there aren't any like greasy or oily spots on the tumbler so i put a little medicine cup underneath the handle of the tumbler just to keep it level so that when I apply the vinyl, it's easier for me to apply it, I guess, on an even surface. Um, if you have one of those tumbler holders, that's even better. But for now, sticking the medicine cup under the handle works pretty well for me. So I purchased these little cute kawaii faces on Etsy. It was a bundle of different kawaii faces and designs. I'm going to see if I can link it in the description down below. I believe I paid like $3 for a bunch of different style faces. I decided to go in with this cute little face with some eyelashes because I wanted my strawberry to be super cute and girly. So I got the one with the cute little eyelashes and I just cut it out with my Cricut Maker. I'm going to apply the face to the front of design and then to the front of the tumbler. And then in the back, I'm actually going to add a quote that says, I love you more than chocolate covered strawberries. Um, I do not show that clip here, but it's pretty basic. I just typed it out in Cricut Design Space and cut it out and then applied it to the back of the tumbler. After I've applied the vinyl designs to the front and the back and I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and seal that in again with the DIY epoxy facet. Once I let that cure, then we're going to go on to the next step, which is applying our drip. So now it's time to create our drip and for this part you're going to need either brown paint or some sort of brown mica powder or something like that to mix into your resin to create the drip. For this particular part I actually did not have any brown paint um, so I decided to make my own brown. So I took some red and some yellow. I also added some 
brown mica powder I have and some brown alcohol inks to help me create the perfect chocolate brown for my drips. I pretty much just played around with the different colors that I had that I knew would help me create a nice warm chocolate brown and once I got that all mixed up I'm going to mix that into my resin. Again, we're using the DIY epoxy facet and I'm also going to be using the nice and thick from counterculture DIY. So I'm going to be mixing up all these three things to help me create the perfect drip on this tumbler. If you're new to color mixing or you have a hard time finding the colors that you want, what's really helpful is to get yourself a color wheel and you can find those easily on Amazon. Um, that will help you figure out what colors you need to mix to create other colors and it's really helpful when you can't find a color that you need. So there's a little tip and trick on color mixing and if you want to see any videos on color mixing or how to create different colors um, then let me know. So I'm going to just let the rest of this clip ride on out so you can see what I do and the steps that I take to help me create the perfect chocolate brown that I am personally looking for. I wish I had exact measurements for you guys at this part, but unfortunately I don't because I'm more of a visual learner and a lot of the times I'm just kind of playing with the different colors and mixtures that I need anyway. But hopefully this part is still helpful, helpful to you guys to kind of see the process that I took and the steps that I took to create the brown that I needed to help me create the drips. Once I'm happy with the color that I have in my little cup, I'm gonna dip my finger in it and just do a quick little paper swatch just to make sure that I'm really happy with the color once it's dried. So you'll notice um, at the end when I'm done with mixing, I'm gonna just do a little swatch for you guys on the paper. Now that we're ready, we can go ahead and mix up our epoxy. So again, I'm using the Facet by DIY Epoxy, and this one is a two to one ratio. So I'm gonna be pouring in five mLs and 10 mLs to create a total of 15 mLs of epoxy. All in all, you don't really need 15 mLs of epoxy for the drip. I probably ended up using maybe 10 mLs, if that, for the drip, however, it's better to have more than you need than less than you need, especially when working with the drip um, because you can always go in with a little bit more drip, but to add drip in the middle of your process, it'd be really inconvenient. So keep that in mind when you're doing the drips that it's better to have a little bit more than not have enough. So my camera actually turned off in the middle of me mixing up my resin. So it, I already added the color into my resin. Now I'm going to take the nice and thick powder from Counterculture DIY and I'm going to put a couple of scoops in my cup and mix that up just to thicken it up a little bit more. So when it comes to the nice and thick, you want to keep adding the powder until you have the consistency that you're looking for. Keep in mind that if you're adding the powder to a fast setting epoxy like this one then you want to try and move a little bit quickly once your epoxy starts setting up it can start to cure faster than what you're applying your drips to so keep that in mind if you're beginning you may want to use a regular setting um, epoxy rather than a fast setting epoxy because if you wait too long then your epoxy could just cure altogether in the middle of you applying your drip so you may want to use a regular epoxy for this step or you can go ahead and use the diy epoxy fasta which does take a little bit longer to start setting up than some other fasta epoxies out there so now it's time to apply the, apply the drips and I do want to mention that I wish at this part I would have let the epoxy harden a little bit more, get a little bit more thicker. If you notice that the resin is a little bit runny, so you want to wait until it's thicker than that. Anyways, I take my popsicle stick and just kind of twirl on the resin so that there's not any resin dripping off of the popsicle stick that will get onto any areas of the tumbler where I don't want the drips to be. So I'm just taking my popsicle stick and just applying it to the rim. Now I'm holding my cup on an angle so that it doesn't start dripping down right away. I'm moving really slowly and just kind of... Um, letting the drips fall where they may right now. So like I said before, I wish I waited a little bit longer for the epoxy to thicken up a little bit more um, because it was a little bit more runny than I had originally wanted it to be. However, it did end up working 
just fine but I had to keep man like maneuvering the tumbler up and down and all around to get the drips to fall how I wanted them to fall. Now, if you notice that your drips are starting to fall down faster than you wanted, what you can do is turn your cup upside down to get those drips to start falling back up or going back up towards the rim of the cup. So you'll notice that I flip my cup upside down to get those drips to kind of pull up back towards the rim and not fall down so fast. Um, here you see where I'm turning it upside down to get them to stop dropping down so fast so that is a way to get your drips to kind of stay where you want them uh, if you're having this issue so i'm gonna let the rest of this part of the video just play on out so you guys can see how i put the rest of the drip onto the tumbler i think this part is really beneficial especially if you haven't done any drips before and you wanted to see the whole entire process after you've applied the entire drip to the cup, you do want to let it cure. So I'm going to leave this cup curing for 24 hours before applying a top coat of resin. That part is definitely up to you if you want to cover the entire tumbler and the drip with resin again, or if you want to just call it a day and leave it like this, depending on how your drip finishes. I think most people seal in the drip in the entire tumbler again with another coat of resin, but that's pretty much it once you're done with your drips and your final coat of resin your cup is finally complete this design was such a fun one to create i have to mention that it was inspired by nicole moon designs one of my girls on instagram she makes the cutest little marshmallow tumblers and i was so inspired by her over the winter that i just had to make a cutie little covered chocolate covered strawberry for valentine's day so hopefully you guys are inspired by this tumbler and either create one yourself or hey maybe another type of fruit or something i don't know i just think that these tumblers are so fun they're so cute especially with the little faces and honestly the possibilities are endless So before the end of this video, I just want to say to you guys that I am so grateful for all of you, for all of you guys who are subscribed to my channel, for all of you guys who are watching this video. I wish you all a happy New Year's. This video is going to be launching on New Year's Day. So happy New Year's to everybody watching. And if you like this video, if you like this tutorial, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, if you're new here, then I would love for you guys to subscribe to my SAS family here on YouTube. Also, if you want to get social with me, then check out the description down below for all the links to my Facebook group, Instagram, TikTok, and more. You'll also find discount codes down below as well as everything that was mentioned in this video linked in the description. Um, don't forget to turn on that notification bell also so you don't miss any of the videos that we have coming up in this brand new year. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in our next video.